continuing on with our discussion of Streamlit so that we can add interactivity to our generative AI applications, now we're going to look at Streamlit state. So state is critically important to web applications and how you manage it. Ideally, you want to make your web applications as stateless as possible, but you need a degree of state. So this is how we handle it here. We'll see, first of all, why you need that state. So let's just go ahead and run it first so we can see the state in action. And then we'll look behind the scenes at how we're actually causing that to happen. So here we go. We are running this. We are assuming that you're using OpenAI, although this application is going to just use a lone amortization, so you don't really need an OpenAI key, but you do need it for the other things, and I assume you have it stored in the secrets of Google Colab. We'll fast forward through this. This takes a moment. All right, we have this available. Here we go. We're running this code. Now notice I am writing it to a file. We're not actually running it because it has to be in a file because we're going to start a server up. If you go to 10.1, I have a whole discussion on how you run Streamlit from inside of Colab like we're doing here. We're going to get our password that we will need. This is just the IP address of the virtual machine that Colab is running us on, but that proves that we are who we say we are. Let's go ahead and run this. This will launch the Streamlit server. We're going to open it here, paste that in, and run it. And we should say my endpoint address is not correct. All right, and we're in. So this is just like before. You saw this in a previous example, but you can put in your loan amount. And that's the amount that you've borrowed. The 7.5 is the interest rate, and 30, 30 years is how long it is going for. So we're going to calculate the amortization table. And just like before, your monthly payment is going to be about $2,000. And the total interest paid is going to be that. So a lot of interest. More interest in the actual home amount, but that's not surprising. And we basically, we, we start through. So you see your first payment is uh, just right around $2,100. Just 200 bucks or so is going to the principal. The rest is going to interest. But you're at the very beginning of a 30-year loan. That's not unusual at all. But what happens if we want to play with this? We think, okay, what happens if I do a 15-year loan? And as soon as it changes it, it now takes our old loan and it just gives you a summary. It's not giving you the month-by-month -month amortization. You're just getting your payment and you're getting the total interest. And we're going to calculate the table. And you can see the table is here, just like before. But you can see that it is now, there's two of them here. This is where the state came in. Because we've clicked that button twice now. So we've gone through this twice. It's entirely stateless if you're not saving things. So that first loan would have been gone if you had not kept that. So every time you're clicking that button, and we're going to need this when we do a chat bot in, a, in the next video, because you would, you would do your first response, your first prompt to the LLM and it would come back with something, but then when you clicked it again, it would have forgotten all of that. So that's got to be stored in the state. Now it's not a session. Session is something else. That is even, that, that stays with you until the session times out. So if I click refresh on this browser, everything goes away. But you can see here, I am putting the, the monthly payment into here. And you can compare these two different loans. So 30 year versus 15 year. Your payment is about $700 higher. So you're paying more money per month, but, over, but you're also done in 15 years and you've paid way less interest. So this is why, this is why I, like the 15 year loan, certainly the, the, the times that I've done real estate transactions. But there's plenty of other finance channels on the, on the YouTube that will tell you all about that. Now, let's look at though the diff a session. This is not a session. If it was a session, I could click refresh. So click refresh and everything's gone now. So a session would have put a cookie in here so that it's, it's, it's tracking me and then when I came back to this web page, 
it would still remember who I am. And that cookie could last as long as you really wanted it to. Usually you set some sort of a timeout, like maybe a week. If you haven't come back to this page in a week, then it, it throws away who you are. But we're not doing sessions. We're just doing state, which lets you remember it from button push to button push. So now let's look at how we actually accomplish this in the code. So this is the code. I provide a function here called calculate amortization. This is just some financial math. There's not a lot going on here. You just need to know the loan amount, the annual rate, and the years. There's a ton of videos that describe exactly how this calculation works, and it's, it's not too bad of a calculation. But we define that and we, we continue, and we check to see if there's, a calc if there's a list of calculations that are in the session state. So st.sessionState, initially, this is an empty list, but we're going to set it, and, and it's an empty list because we, we, we will set it. So it, it wasn't in that dictionary, so we're going to initialize it to an empty list. We create our title to be the amortization calculator, and we create, because remember, we're going to be going through this multiple times. The first time we go through is when the page is initially displayed. So it's going to display these three inputs that you use to enter your loan amount, amortization amount, and your loan term, how long it is. These will initially come back all as none because there are no values for it. We, we've just now created them. We also add the button called calculate loan amortization table. This will initially also come back as none because the button is, we've added the button, but it has not been pushed pressed yet. Do you push a button or press a button? Anyway, we then calculate the amortization amount based on those values that we just retrieved, and we write out the, the monthly payment, total interest paid. Those are the two key things that you're really looking at. How much of a monthly payment can I afford versus how much total interest am I going to pay over the, the life of the loan and, and save that? Then we we display, oh, before we display, we put that we add those values into the that table, the, the state table, so that we'll have it when we go back through for the next button push. And then we display the save calculation. So if there are calculations saved there, then we're going to do the subheader for the loan saved amount. We're going to create the data frame for those calculations that we stored. And we are then going to um, display that data frame and give the option to download the CSV if you so desire. And then you can also clear the state if you also so desire. And I think I skipped explaining this, but it, you, you probably saw it there. This is where we display the amortization table to the whole, to the whole page. So this shows you how to add some state to your, to, to your page. And thank you for watching the video. And if you have uh, any questions, post them in the comments and smash that like button if this was helpful to you. And please subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on all my other projects in artificial intelligence.